So, you want to have a model railroad layout, but say you don't have the space. I hear that story all the time. People say they want to get into the hobby, they want a layout, but insist they don't have room for it. Hi everybody, I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot, and welcome to my new series on building the layout I'm calling The Grunge. In this video, we're going to discuss how I came up with the concept for this small layout, how you can use these steps in your own planning, and why no space is often just an excuse. This video is going to be heavy on thought processes I use to come up with the layout's concept, but I hope it will help you understand the questions you should be asking yourself as you go. Let's get some formalities out of the way. Subscribe to the channel for ongoing information about model railroading, including planning, hints, tips, how-tos, and updates. Click on the bell so you'll get notified when there is new content available. And if you click the thumbs up to like this video now, you won't have to worry about it later. I may have said somewhere before that... People often think that you need a lot of space to build a layout. Well, that was weird. I may have also said, the reality is you can have a ton of fun with something quite small. Okay, that's getting old. Knock it off. Look, I know that for some people, a lack of space is a real issue. But there's also a contingent out there where it really is just an excuse. You can build a layout in a compact area. It's common in the UK, for example. People there rarely have basements or a lot of extra space to build and operate a layout, but they find a way to have some kind of setup. They find a corner or build it on a bookcase or on a shelf. People may say, well, on a small layout, I won't be able to operate the way I want to. Well, that may be true, I'll admit. On a small layout, you're not going to be able to run long trains, and unless you're modeling at a tiny, tiny scale, you're not going to be able to have a continuous loop of track. But if you're short on space, and the choice is between no layout at all, or building something to cut your teeth and learn so you'll have the skills to actually build that dream layout someday, I say adjust your expectations and move forward. I'm hoping this series of videos will help you do just that. You might even want to build this one along with me at your own home. Whether we realize it or not, every layout starts with a concept. That concept is the confluence of a bunch of triggers, goals, and ideas. The grunge layout is no different. Like many people, I watch a bunch of videos here and subscribe to various YouTube channels. Many YouTubers have some sort of background that relates to their topic. Sometimes it's just books. Sometimes it's a shelf with various items on it. Sometimes it's just an image in the background. It gives the videos a more professional look and provides some insight into what the channel's about. As you can see here, I've got almost nothing. I put this little contest diorama that I built here just for now so that it wasn't completely empty. But it's really looking pretty pathetic back there. Of course, since I'm always thinking about content for this channel, I immediately thought, hey, that would make a great series of videos that we can put on here. And that's what we're starting here with this episode. I wanted people to be able to see the layout behind me as I record my videos, so I decided it would be great to put it on top of a couple of bookcases. These are 36 inches high and the layout will have about a 4-inch base. I thought that would provide a reasonable viewing angle for the camera. I'm also a proponent of backdrops, so I wanted to make sure there could be a relatively high backdrop to help the illusion that this was a real spot in the city and not something sitting on a couple of bookcases. The room I'm recording in is adjacent to my layout room. Some may call it a crew lounge or whatever, but the reality is it's shared space and I can't just fill it up completely. To my right, your left, is a doorway that goes to another room that houses the furnace, the oil tank, and we also use it as a storage area. Because we need access to that door, the space behind me has to stay relatively narrow, although it is a decent length. This is what I'm working with. This would be a relatively small layout, but I've also devoted a considerable space down here already to the main Monument City Terminal Division layout. In order to maintain a happy home life, I made sure to discuss this idea with my wife and be sure that she was okay with me taking the space. She said no, but I'm going to do it anyway. It's small. She'll never notice, notice, notice. Seriously, it's a good idea to make sure your spouse and family are on board if that applies to you. These are similar issues that you might encounter when you're thinking about putting a small layout in your own home. Often you have to consider shared space, family agreements, multiple uses, trying to fit something into a particular set area while keeping in mind what else happens in that space and making sure that you can still use it for that purpose. 
I measured it out and the total available space behind me is 15 and 1 8 inches by 94 inches. Since we need to walk through on the left side, your right, and often we are carrying things when we do so, I didn't want it to constrict us too much, so I decided not to go all the way to the edge, and so I settled on a length of 90 inches for the layout. Even at that, I need to keep the height on that side, toward the front especially, low, so that as we carry things around, we still have freedom of movement and we don't damage any scenery or structures. With that determined, I went looking for track plans that might work. Now, it can be a challenge to find a layout that's a good fit for your space that also meets your criteria. If I'm honest, I got a little lucky. I knew that with a layout this size and my modeling interests being what they are, I was likely looking at a heavy urban setting with tightly packed industries, maybe an alley in the middle of a city or something like that. And then I happened to remember reading an article recently on a layout called the 59th and Rust. thought it might be close to fitting the bill. It was featured in both the April 2019 Model Railroader as well as the November 2020 Railroad Model Craftsman. It certainly met the dirty and grungy urban motif I was looking for and was just about the right size, although the 59th and Rust is wider and longer than the space that I actually have. It also used more and more expensive turnouts than I wanted to. Now, I had some Pico Code 100 small radius switches that I had left over from a previous layout that I wanted to use. But the 59th and Rust also had some three-way Pico switches in it that I wasn't quite sure I wanted to use. Even so, I was able to use the 59th and Rust as a starting point for my plan, making some changes along the way. More on that in the upcoming track planning video in this series. Given the small size, I considered backdating this layout from the 1984 era that I use on my main layout, maybe taking it back to the 50s or 60s that would allow me to use smaller locomotives and maybe 40-foot cars. I even thought maybe I'd make it a different railroad and maybe I'd use an Alco locomotive or something like that, something that I don't have on my main layout currently. But after consideration, I decided to set it in a time where I could reuse the equipment that I already had. After doing some calculations, I determined the grunge could support 50-foot cars, and if I used a small locomotive like a GP7 or GP9, everything would be fine. At the end of the day, the layout is generic enough and has a generic enough location that if I decide later I want to make a change or I find a great deal on an RS-11, I can always switch it up. I should mention that I even considered doing a complete change from my main layout and going for something set in the country. A couple of things made me stick with the urban setting, though. I decided that I enjoy heavy switching too much to go country, so to speak, and I have a number of structure kits already in hand that I'm not going to find a home for on the main layout, so I want to try and use them here. So in the end, I stuck with the urban setting. So a few things here as you consider your own small layout. Number one, there are a ton of track plans out there on the internet to help you get started. Both Model Railroader and Model Railroad Hobbyist have track plan databases that you can access. I'll include links to those in the description below. You don't have to come up with something from scratch, but you may want or need to do some tweaking once you find a track plan in order to make it fit your vision. Number two, what are your modeling leanings? For me, I lean towards the urban, so a bunch of delivery spots in a very small area worked great for me. But if you're more into Granger railroading, you can get a lot of fun and operations out of a small single track mainline with one or two spurs to industries like grain elevators. And if you're on a tighter budget, this can help because you have fewer structures you have to build. Number three, if you're considering a small layout, the era and equipment sizes common to that era should be something you think about. In a small layout, you may not have the luxury of using large modern six-axle locomotives and 60-foot boxcars common today, for example. Equipment from older eras may allow you to fit more in the same space. And number four, if you already have items in hand that you can use, Think about whether it makes sense to build the concept of your layout around at least some of those items rather than buying all new materials. Most layouts I've seen have a name, and it seemed to make sense to name this one too since I'm going to be referring to it a lot in these videos. On the rail railroad, virtually everything has a name. Jobs, tracks, locations, yards, and so on. Coming up with a name is a very prototypical thing to do. So by this time, I knew the layout was going to take the form of an alley in the city, and that it would be a shabby and unkempt area. So I thought maybe I'd call it Shabby Alley. But that seemed a little too on the nose, and, and of course no street is likely to actually be named Shabby Alley or Shabby Street or something like that. 
I've been on an anagram kick lately for some reason, so I visited the anagram server online and did a check on the word shabby. The results weren't great because the server's not meant to return names or proper nouns. But looking at the word, I realized that Bashby was an anagram and thought that might work, so Bashby Alley was a working title for a while. But it never really grabbed me and it never quite felt right. Maybe it sounded a little bit too British, I don't know. At some point, rather than copying the 59th and Rust naming pattern, I got thinking about what the crews might call the job. I thought it a reasonable assumption they might refer to it as the grunge job or simply the grunge. That really appealed to me, so that's what I decided to go with. Something in the back of my head tells me I've heard or read about another layout somewhere called the grunge, but a Google search didn't turn up anything, so I decided to keep it. If I'm reusing someone's layout name, I apologize. One thing I'd like to point out, from the modeling aspect, it can be perfectly okay to settle on something, like a name, just because it feels right. It's your layout. Do what you want. All right, with my concept in place, it was time to start thinking about how I could take the track plan and make it my own. And in the next episode, I'll talk about how I did that. That's all for this episode. I hope this will get you thinking about how you could build a small layout of your own. If you have suggestions or questions, include them in the comments below. And if you've built a small layout already, use the comments to tell us how you came up with the concept. If you enjoyed this video, click on the thumbs up to like it so it will get saved to your liked playlist. I'm Joe Parker of the Pixel Depot. Thank you so much for watching, and I hope you'll meet me next time in the train room. <coughs>